in some world that I've heard about, I know this world exists. I've seen glimpses of this world in movies. And I've read about this world in books and magazines. There's this world where people are educated and they have money and they have houses and really excellent cars. Maybe they have pools in the backyard and they take vacations and they're the kind of people who maybe they own two houses. They spend their time in two different places. Uh, they have the house in Calabasas and they have the house in Connecticut or some shit. And anyway, they have these dinner parties and they discuss books, movies, politics. I imagine this book, Play It As It Lays by Joan Didion, has been discussed at such parties by such people. Now, the world that I was born into, the people that I come from, it's safe to say I don't know anyone in my immediate life who has read this book. Uh, my mom and sister recently were gushing about, what is it, where the crawdads sing, where the crawdads sing, it was turned into a, a movie. Okay. I'm the misfit of my family. I'm the only one in my family who has read The Heart is a Lonely Hunter, Almost Transparent Blue, Slaughterhouse Five, um, Sutri, um, Play It As It Lays by Joan Didion. Fortunately for me, I can discuss this book with my ex-husband, my son's father. Um, it's kind of weird and fascinating to me that this is the longest relationship of my life other than family. <clears throat> the friendship I have with my ex-husband, my son's father. We met in... 2004 got together in March 2004 got married April 22nd 2005 anyway it's been the longest friendship of my life and I'm very fortunate that we can discuss art and movies and books uh, but I can't imagine having a dinner party and discussing this with a lot of people because I don't really have any friends. <laughs> I don't have any friends other than my ex-husband. But uh, I imagine a world where this book has been discussed ad nauseum. And I put off reading this book for a while for such reasons. Uh I thought, okay, it's going to be that kind of book, that kind of book that people who have money and privilege talk about, and I don't, I don't have time for that. But it's a great book. I bow down to Joe Didion. This book has lit a fire under my ass, and I know that my attempt is going to pale in comparison, but there's nothing for it. You know, there are some books you read and you think, okay, I need to just hang up the spurs, give it up, maybe take up bowling or cross-stitching. There are writers and there are people who try to write. So I, I read this book and I think, fuck, I cannot dance to this. But I gotta try, because I disobey Bukowski on a regular basis. I try, and I try, and I try. I wrote the rough draft for
for the Queen of Texas in three weeks for NaNoWriMo. Last November, November 2021. And I've been meaning to get around to the revision, but it's very ambitious because I'm going to gut the rough draft. All that I'm probably going to keep of the rough draft is the first paragraph. So a major fucking overhaul. And whenever I write a book or I'm writing a book, I go to Amazon and I put the title in to see what comes up. So I put in, uh, I made a mock cover last night to inspire myself. I went to Canva and made a mock cover. The Queen of Texas. It's got a black background and the photo of this gaudy, probably fake crown, like the kind of tiara you would get at Party City or some shit. Anyway, I go to Amazon, I put in the Queen of Texas, and Queen of Texas, a historical romance comes up, and it has a similar cover with just the plain background and then like a party city crown, and I thought, fuck. But not to be um, arrogant, but... I think it's safe to say that my book is going to kick that book's ass. So, I don't know. I I alternate between arrogance and self-loathing. You know, I think, oh, I can do this. I got this. I think Bullshit Rodeo is a damn good novel. And then I go back and I read Bullshit Rodeo and I'm just filled with fresh loathing for myself. Um, I talk about Fuck or Butt Happy Time. Oh, that's the best book I ever actually wrote is Fuck or Butt Happy Time. Then I go back and I actually read it. And yeah, anyway, here is an excerpt from Joan Didion's Play It As It Lays. And I want to say Maria because it looks like fucking Maria, but she tells you in the book that it's not pronounced Maria, it's pronounced Mariah. That is my chief complaint with this book. It looks like Maria, but she points out that it's actually pronounced Mariah. That's some bullshit, but whatever. Okay. Mariah. Yes or no? I see a cock. In the sink plot. Mariah, yes or no? A large number of people are guilty of bad sexual conduct. I believe my sins are unpardonable. I have been disappointed in love. How could I answer? How could it apply? Nothing applies. And I love it because nothing applies is in all caps. And I want to go to Redbubble and make a t-shirt that says nothing applies. That's my new thing. How could I answer? How could it apply? Nothing applies. I print with a magnetized IBM pencil. What does apply, they ask later. As if the word nothing were ambiguous, open to interpretation a questionable fragment of an Icelandic rune. There are only certain facts, I say, trying again to be an agreeable player of the game. Certain facts, certain things that happened. Why bother, you might ask. I bother for Kate. What I play for here is Kate. Carter put Kate in there. And I am going to get her out. They will misread the facts, invent connections, will extrapolate reasons for none exist. But I told you, that is their business here. <laughs>